everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Financial Insight Show. I'm your host today, Muelo Chvesokunda, and with me is a face that in the fintech space is well known. I'm going to be sitting down with uh, Chilufi Mtale, who uh, is, uh, you know, the, the group head of uh, what used to be known as Premier Credit, who are now rebranding as eShandy. So stay tuned for insights from this interview. Hi, everyone. So we're back. So Chilufia, welcome to this uh, special episode. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here again. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we're ho obviously hosting you for the second time. I, I know we have visited you a, a couple of times, but just tell us about what's going on. Now we've heard the big news about the big rebrand of Premier Credit. Are we closing down Premier Credit? What's going on there? What's yeah. with the, what's with the rebrand? <laughs> uh, we are, um, you know, we're a homegrown uh, entity and um, expanding and building a Pan-African um, a financial technology company mm -hmm. and uh, when we talk about building something that is homegrown it really has to speak to what uh, you know the name has to speak to what we are doing where we are going and why we are here right so you will find that as we started premier credit uh, we were only focused on lending mm -hmm. and we're focused on lending lending to the unbanked and underbanked really mm -hmm. focusing on marginalized communities and when we realized and, and learned more about our customers and really the pain points that they face in their various businesses and their journeys, um, it was just more than just lending. Uh, there's financial education, there's financial literacy, especially, especially when you're deploying innovative solutions uh, with the use of technology and for people to really understand how safe these methods are. Um, our USSD platforms that we deployed uh, through our partners. So you'll find that um, it's important to add other financial services if truly you are serving uh, your customer and solving their pain points. And so we then um, rebranded into something that resonates to what we are really doing. Mm. We are banking the unbanked. Mm. We are providing financial services to people that need it the most when they need it at the right time. And we're providing financing to people who are historically, or I would say previously disadvantaged income groups. So these are people who are trading in business, who are not able to access financial services from traditional financial institutions. Some of them are not even able to fill in the forms that they are required. Some of them are not even able to meet the collateral requirements for some of the financial services that they are getting. And most of these customers have to move with cash. So in moving with cash, they need to save money, that's cash. They need to transfer money from one point to another to access a good or service that requires the use of cash. And then they also need to build their financial future. So how are they going to do it? And this is where we come in. And that's why we will brand it to Ishandi. Ishandi means mine. Okay, Ishandi, Ishandi mine. mine. And then the E really is electronic. So we're using digital platforms. So we're moving people from a cash-driven society to a cashless uh, society, a digital economy where our customers are able, on the, with the palm of their hands, can use a phone, whether it's a smart a smartphone, whether it's an internet-enabled phone, uh, enabled phone or a simple phone, where they can access even via USSD, any financial services from simple savings, mm -hmm. loans, investments, insurance, payment services, mm -hmm. even in the far flung areas, in the remote uh, areas. So Ishandi really is we're giving power back to you and power is in your hands. What we want customers to be able to do is build their financial future, mm -hmm. have access to the tools on one platform. So it's not just getting a service, but you're also able to manage your finances, see how your finances are growing, uh, build your credit score, improve on your credit score. So we're providing these tools free for our customers so that you're able to see through what you are transacting. We are introducing you now into formal financial service. So that even later on, you can then go to a commercial bank, access financing because financing because you have financial records, mm -hmm. you have financial history. This is a challenge that most of our customers that we save, serve face. Lack of um, uh, the ability, they, they lack the ability to provide financial uh, information on their businesses for them to access financing from the traditional financial institutions. So by us providing that platform, and building that access for them, we then transition them from informal financial services to 
your formal financial uh, services. Right. Now, just just to touch on, you know, the market opportunity that's that's there. You know, we understand that it's close to 330 billion in terms of uh, financing gaps and this is US dollars yeah. uh, for SMEs across sub-Saharan Africa. How is Eshandi specifically positioning itself to address this particular gap? And then are there any unique solutions because now you're crossing borders. You're going beyond Zambia now. Yeah. How are you position yourself? So you know that um, when we look at this financing gap, it's it's tremendously huge. And then the people that are affected by this are the missing middle, people you call the missing middle. Missing middle is where you have your small business, small uh, medium enterprises who are not traditionally served, who are missed out by the traditional lending institutions. And then they are way above the base of the pyramid segment. Mm -hmm. So you find that the solutions that you provide for the base of pyramid segment might not necessarily cater to them. Mm -hmm. So you find that this is affecting around 40 million SMEs who are facing this uh, gap. And then out of these SMEs across sub-Saharan Africa, 90% of these form 90% of all the jobs across Africa. So imagine 90% of all businesses mm -hmm. don't have access to finance. And this is just sub-Saharan Africa. And then out of these, of all jobs, 60% of them, 60% of all jobs come from this same uh, segment. So imagine empowering that segment. You are empowering 60% of the job, the workforce, mm -hmm. and then you are empowering 90% of all businesses in Africa, just that missing middle alone. So the impact is really huge. So how do we contribute it? Obviously, as Ishandi, we can't meet that whole gap on our right. own. What we're going to then do is participate, collaborate with institutions that are targeting this missing middle. Mm -hmm. These are your large institutions, such as the World Bank through IFC, uh, through the Development Finance Corporation, DFC Africa. Um, uh, we have Inox Capital, Enigma Ventures, various, various uh, impact funders, Red and Capital, that uh, focus on this missing middle, missing middle mm -hmm. uh, financing the SMEs. And these institutions uh, fund smaller funds mm -hmm. that basically support these segments. So we collaborate with them mm -hmm. to basically focus on the same target uh, segment. So the role we play really is we are on the ground, mm -hmm. working with the customers, and then in collaboration with our partners that provide us with the financing, we then on lend to the people that need it the most. But now, now Jill, if you hold on, because you know this, this does mean that there's a lot of pressure in terms of the type of technology that you get to deploy. Are you able to just give us, uh, you know, like a, a feel of, uh, you know, what sort of innovation is required? Because you're mentioning different tiers that need to access this uh, this capital. How is Ishandi addressing that? So you will find that um, for us, the reason why we, we first have to understand why are they considered the missing middle? Mm -hmm. Why are they underlooked? Why are they uh, disadvantaged income groups, right? Mm -hmm. So you will find that the, the three, um, the main reasons, one, they lack the collateral basically to pledge, which is owned by themselves. Some of them don't even have the adequate KYC to provide. For example, uh, you do know that you need to provide your utility bill, which is in correct. your name. Well, correct, correct. So that means that's a property that's in your name. Not yeah. everybody has property in their name. Most people are renting. How do they then provide alternative KYC to support that? Mm -hmm. How do you verify their location? Right. And then you'll find that some of them don't have financial data to use, mm -hmm. for example, like um, bank statements with positive cash flows that show the transactions that they they've had over the last six to, to 12 months. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the requirements, they'll ask you for your audited financial statements, 12 months. But if you look at these small SMEs, some of them don't even have those books. Some of them are not even registered, for example, in Zambia with PACRA. Mm -hmm. So for us, we leverage off technology mm -hmm. using various data points to then basically mm -hmm. uh, assess and predict the ability That's of customers like to then pay like using AI, AI right. yes, and machine learning. Mm. So in partnership, for example, in our partnership with, with Airtel, for example, we use various data points. And then from those data points, we're then able to assess the credit worthiness of somebody. So even if they don't have mm. a traditional bank account, they can still access financing without even pledging mm. any securities. So these also, uh, in a collaboration also with the Credit Reference Bureau, um, we use the data that they, um, they provide as well, and then we're able to make uh, smart assessments from these customers. So we use various data points through various partners that enable us then to quickly deploy capital, working capital, to our customers without, um, you know, the traditional way of 
trying to figure out whether will this person uh, pay you or not, right. right? Because if they don't have the bank statements, what then essentially happens? So it's like in a way you're positioning yourself to win. Now I can imagine that... Um, and structuring the products differently. Absolutely. For example, you have some of your customers who have various orders from well-known suppliers. I mean, well-known uh, institutions where they're trying to supply to. It becomes, you know, even without collateral, you're able to provide that financing. You just reinforce the security around how that payment comes back to you as a financial uh, institution so that you also protect your your key stakeholders in your in, in your company so we also tailor make the products and services depending on the kind of the kind of business so it's not one product and that's the only thing we deploy but they are they are multiple multiple products as right. well now Chufa, it obviously with this complex technology it must mean that you know navigating regulatory issues must be very interesting depending on which country that you're in we do understand that you know you have interests in, not only in Zambia but in southern Africa and now you know in in, in Eastern Africa, um, are you able to tell us about you know some of the unique challenges that you've you know you've come across from a regulatory perspective and whether you know technology has got anything to do with it, but also uh, how is Ishandi now approaching and navigating through these various regulatory frameworks? So um, you will find that it's it's interesting that because we are coming from a space where we participated recently in a regulatory sandbox mm -hmm. and also applied for our own uh, payment systems business license as well as um, um, other licenses that we are acquiring in this market, uh, learning from that experience has helped us better prepare for our license applications in other markets. For example, just recently we acquired our own lending license in South Africa, uh, a market which is uh, very, very advanced, uh, much larger than the market we are coming from. But you find that the rules of engagement and basically the requirements are almost the same. Yes, almost the same when it comes to the regulators mm. for, for financing to the financial institutions. And then also you will find that there are also existing sandboxes as well in other markets where you can experiment or alternative finance, financing um, innovations uh, to deploy as well. So it's it's much easier, but the only difference you'll find in some markets, um, you cannot 100% own your entity. Right. Uh, you have to partner with local uh, indigenous players mm -hmm. uh, in that market. Those are uh, regulatory requirements. Uh, but in other markets, you can go into a market and own your business 100% as a foreign entity, mm -hmm. and then you are able to operate within three to six months. In other markets, it's very, very complicated. <laughs> <I can imagine. laughs> uh, <laughs> very, very complicated. Mm. And, and we do understand uh, why they are set up in, 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 the, in those structures. Mm. But the market opportunities are huge. These are markets that are four to ten times larger than our, yeah. our market in Zambia. The opportunity is high. So we just have to weigh our options in terms of the opportunity cost and um, um, the access. Right. Now, obviously for the growth uh, you know, trajectory that you've been on, uh, partnerships we can imagine have been very very important uh, in you know in your expansion journey um, how have you leveraged off uh, partnerships with not only local local institutions but technology partners and development partners and you know to accelerate like your market uh, entry and uh, you know the service offerings that uh, that that they've had so um, I'm happy to share that we recently signed a partnership agreement with Yango mm. uh, um, with their holding company basically okay. to help um, work with them across the whole of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, we are first targeting five key markets for them and where we'll be providing uh, asset financing to their partners. And that helps us really penetrate in new markets where we are not present. And uh, it gives us access to new markets even quicker because there's already an existing potential customer base for us. Mm -hmm. And like going into a market and starting from scratch building trust and your own uh, base, but it accelerates our growth as a business through partners that are already existing existing in multiple markets. Um, we already have an existing partnership with, I would give an example of Airtel, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, dominant in Africa. And basically our traction that we've been able to, um, uh, to provide here in Zambia basically is a proof of concept that we can be able to deploy the same even in multiple uh, markets where opportunity does arise and there's room for additional financial players coming into their space in, in, in other markets. So these partnerships really accelerate the growth. They accelerate market access. Uh, the only hurdle you have to then overcome is the regulatory um, uh, approvals so that then you are able to then deploy financial services in these markets. But we really love the fact that the players that we have really also are driving financial inclusion to the last mile as well. 
Yeah. Right. No, that's very, very interesting. Now, and on a final note, um, you know, as you focus on empowering marginalized uh, communities, because obviously your solutions are more impact driven, how does Ishandi measure and uh, track its social impact across uh, different markets? And uh, what are some of the success stories that uh, have emerged uh, so far from your journey? So we have worked with key uh, partners, uh, one of them being uh, Verdant Capital that have provided us with technical assistance um, through their partners that uh, provided a social rating, uh, mm -hmm. a pre-social rating for us as an institution. Um, the purpose of the social rating is really to assess our business in how we are focusing on the social, environmental, and, um, and economic uh, 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 metrics in terms of the impact also for our institution and how we really serve uh, our customers and our corporate structures and governance around it. So you find this kind of technical assistance helps you build systems uh, that you then essentially use to then develop, um, um, uh, you develop tools that easily uh, using the different data points basically measure your impact. Mm -hmm. So in terms of our customers, uh, a few years ago, you'd find that the number of women that we had on our portfolio were around 30%. Mm -hmm. Now it's around 57%. Impressive. So we've already crossed the 50% uh, mark. Um, that was our target, that 50% of all our borrowers should be women. Uh, majority, around close to 70%, are the youth. So that milestone we already hit. And then we also wanted to focus on um, customers that have not been able to access uh, financial services previously. And so you'd find that out of over 1 million customers that we've been able to serve, over 60% now have been introduced into formal financial services. So that's a very big goal for us. And uh, previously, even prior to any of our partnerships, you know, we had a customer base of around 10 to 20,000 customers floating around that area. But through partnership, we're able to accelerate that uh, over 100 times. So now crossing over a million customers. And now we're looking forward to the next 10 million customers as we expand across sub-Saharan Africa. Absolutely. No, thank you so much, Chilufa, for sharing this. Um, I know you've obviously been very, very busy. What What's the rest of the year looking like for you? And how is Ishandi going to close off 2024? Um, we expect, uh, anticipate God willing, that uh, we close on a very, very strong note. Um, we are really pressing and pushing for a target of 1.5 million customers uh, as we close the year. Um, and then we expect our year-on-year -year revenue growth rate to grow steadily. Um, we also expect to close the year with key partners uh, to help us expand into other markets. Um, and then we also um, really want to focus on um, building other products, uh, insurance, particularly insurance products uh, for our customers, really that solve uh, most of their challenges. So especially around health, uh, medical, um, for marginalized communities, uh, it's very difficult to access uh, great health care. Mm -hmm. And so you find that the cash that you're making from your business, when most of that working capital is driven towards solving problems at home, mm -hmm. you find the working capital drops and someone's business it takes time for them to scale up. But if they have insurance solutions where they are contributing a very, very small, minute amount of money, let's say one quarter, two quarter, you know, towards a contribution to a scheme that supports their whole family, trust you me, you're really saving them a long mile because you're helping them keep that working capital for their business so that they're able to have an opportunity to build their own financial future. Absolutely. Yeah. No, Chilufi, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you've heard it for yourself. Uh, this has been my interview with uh, Ishandi, and uh, you know we really look forward to tracking their progress as they expand across Africa. I've been your host, Melich Vesakunda, so stay tuned for more insights from Financial Insight and get to know. <laughs>